Believing in something false feels just like believing in something that is true. Fucking you. No. No? I don't really take time to, I guess, believe in something false. Have you ever believed in something false before? I'm sure. And can you imagine a time that you believed in something and then you changed your mind? Yeah, so I guess it was the same. Because I didn't know what I didn't know. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm struggling with No, this. no, it's it good. Like... I just got chills hearing you say that. <laughs> How do you want to mark it? <laughs> mm. Maybe before I do that one, I should talk about 13. Okay. Believing something without evidence is admirable. What do you think? <laughs> Let's talk about that one first. We probably kind of that one first. I don't know what to say. Like... One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone, I'm so excited to share two of my favorite things in one video, Burning Man and Street Epistemology. In 2022, I returned to Burning Man for my eighth year, having visited Burning Man since 2013. The first year I practiced SE, or Street Epistemology, at Burning Man was 2017. But every interview had problems, some were technical such as audio issues, some were interviewing techniques and styles I still needed to learn from. This year I was determined to capture an interview worthy of publication but I still faced many challenges. Riding against the wind, doing a lot of stuff. You can see me here riding my bike with all my equipment to the center of the city. The desert is harsh on equipment. My camera kept overheating. Somehow my audio became garbled at times. There is much noise and distractions at Burning Man. It was also 100 degrees each day this year and sleep was always hard to come by. So in the beginning of this talk, I may appear a bit more sluggish than usual. Burning Man and SE both mean so much to me and I've dreamed of combining the two again. I haven't released a video in a long time and it's not because I haven't been working. Much SE work is behind the scenes. I've been collaborating with writers to build on an online training course for SE. I've been traveling with other SEers to work on their projects. There are many internal affairs within the SE community I've been working on as well but we'll talk about that in another video. I've even flown out of state to provide training on SE to businesses. If you're new to the channel, allow me to briefly explain what this project is about. Street epistemology is a way to help people critically reflect on the quality of their reasoning through civil conversation. My goals today are to inspire reflection and critical thinking in a way that is positive, uplifting, and inspirational. I hope to inspire both my conversation partners and you, the viewer. For the conversation partner, I want to ask questions that cause them to reflect on our talk long after the interview is over. And I want to inspire you, the viewer, to consider a world in which we prioritize understanding and collaboration across ideological divides. Instead of the celebration of negativity and conflict we tend to see all over the internet today. I hope you learn something from this conversation, or at very least, find something useful to take away from it. And without further ado, here is the interview. Well, if you're interested, I'm doing interviews with people at random about their beliefs and why they believe them, if you're curious about that. Or if you're not in that space right now, that's fine too. Sure. Yeah? What do you, what's the, what do you mean, like, believe? Yeah, I'm going to come in the shade and I'll, and I'll tell you about it and then you can decline if you want. Is it right if I record it? The excellent, sure. Yeah, this is our conversation. Um, the purpose of the recording is one. Um, if you leave your contact info with me, I'll send it to you later so you can listen to your own conversation. Oh, that's so good. Uh, and I believe that if we're given an opportunity to listen to ourselves, and also it gives me an opportunity to be a better listener because um, I can play it back and find the things that I missed um, that I could have asked better questions. And so it's like a Socratic dialectic that I practice. Yeah. Um, so there's three options, and um, you don't need to agree to any of them if you don't want to. Um, 
But the first one is you just tell me something that you believe is true and real. Something that possibly motivates you to behave differently um, in your everyday life. Uh, something that you think is important. Uh, and you can tell me about that. Or I have this survey here. These are lit up. Uh, these are common things I've heard in interviews like this as ways to arrive at truth or ways to arrive at a particular belief and how that confidence is weighed. And so we can fill that out and we can have a meta discussion about belief overall. Yeah. And then the third and final option is you can write down your belief on a little piece of paper and we'll put it in an envelope and set it aside. And I'll ask you about your reasoning process without knowing what it is we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And we can explore the belief that way as well. And then we can reveal it at the end. I think I will do the meta. The meta. So like the, the survey. All right. Awesome. Here it is. And here's your pen. It's a weird pen. And uh, you don't need a right claim unless you have like a claim to truth that you want uh, me to investigate. But okay. basically you just fill this out and um, it's on a confidence scale between agree and disagree. And the middle is like neutral or doesn't apply. My conversation partner today is Kelly. They are simply an ideal interlocutor. They seem to me to be very open and vulnerable and curious by nature. For the purposes of a quality talk, I find it helpful that they've just arrived from Burning Man's temple. The temple serves as a space for healing and worship. Many attendees spend time in meditation and prayer inside and leave totems of lost loved ones to be burnt with the structure in their memory. The fact that Kelly just arrived from there may serve this interview well by slowing down our reflexive thinking and allow for wonder to take its place. As we go over each statement on the survey, I will display an image of their response on screen. Each statement represents common epistemological conundrums. Participants are asked to mark their agreeableness with strongly agree on the left and strongly disagree on the right. I will consider a conversation a success if I and or my conversation partner discovers a new way of thinking about reasoning. And while Kelly is filling out this survey, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, a few supporters, um, people who've helped me make this video possible. Reed from Cordial Curiosity gifted me a GoPro 360 camera just before I left for Burning Man, so that was really nice of him. Uh, David from Sound Epistemology did some editing for this video, which I'm internally grateful for because uh, editing <laughs> is probably the most difficult part about the YouTube channel for me. And uh, Street Epistemology International approved some grants that I wrote them, and they helped me get some equipment. Um, I also have Patreons that have supported this channel as well. Without your support, this video would not exist. For information about this stuff, you can check it out in the description. <laughs> I don't even... Some of these are... I love that really, reaction. I don't know. Some of them I can't even answer. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, a discussion about why you can't would be a good one, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What is reality? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, number two. Um, let me put it like this, because uh, it might help add context for the rest of the survey. Uh -huh. um, there's multiple definitions for this word reality in the English language. Um, and often people will use reality to mean like their perspective or like their their outlook. And that's like the second definition. I'm talking about the first definition, which is like universal objective reality. Like, and maybe you don't believe it's real. Uh, I, so, and this is part of the discussion. Is there a reality that we're sharing that existed before we were here or might, or may continue to exist after we're gone? 
and how do we think about that? That's what I'm. That's what I'm wanting to know, and that's what number two is. Oh. So we could replace num. We can replace this word reality with universe, and I think it would read the same way. Okay, so you would agree to that? Okay. Well, yeah. We all share the same universal universe, and only interpret that universe differently. Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, we're we're here. Like. Yeah. Some people will surprisingly disagree with that. And we have a discussion about that, and that's, that's good. Anyway, that's the context for which I'm curious about reality and for the survey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this video, and I encourage you to share your insights in the comments section. As you watch, consider how we can collectively enhance this conversation. Aside from being respectful and engaging, I tend to find that the most useful comments include timestamps to particular moments in the talk with suggested questions. Huh. The most important criteria for my beliefs is that they match. I think alignment with like Mother Nature. Like. Yeah. That would be another way, or another way to put it, in my view, and I, you know, this is my perspective, another way that could be interpreted would be, um, the most important criteria for my beliefs is that they are true and real. Yeah. yeah. And then you can mark however you want on that, agree or disagree. Follow the course of Mother Nature. Or like with number one, a statement is true when it corresponds to reality. Maybe we need to explore that one. Oh, a statement is true when it corresponds. Yeah. To. I mean, if it's if it's a statement is true when it corresponds to the reality of mother, like Mother Earth, like the, like the way, like nature moves, like the seasons, everything that has to do with nature, then. I feel like. Is the same thing? Could I? Could I? In take what I'm hearing you say and try to repeat it. Yeah. Is, and I'll change it a little bit to see if you disagree with the way I'm changing it. Mm -hmm. And if, if you do, please let me know. Um, in accordance with like the laws, it, a statement is true when it corresponds to what is real and things that are actually happening, like the laws of physics. Like I'm just trying to replace mother nature with like something more um like grounded like um, i mean yeah okay i mean nature is grounded in the way the seasons flow and the trees grow and the leaves fall okay like that's what i would would do those things follow the laws of physics do you think or like their genetics or their like genetic background or it's just the reality of cycle and like it's so metaphoric for life too. The statement is true when it corresponds to, the rea to reality. I mean I would have to agree okay. if you're talking about science and like it'd be anything really. Oh is there an example that would that would be left out? So we could say science is absolutely a part of it, though I'm wondering, is there something not a part of it that makes something true? Another, yeah, I'll just stop there. No, I think it's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, makes sense. okay, good. Something I've been working on lately is avoiding asking compound questions or repetitive questions. Sometimes when we feel like our question requires clarity to be fully understood, we can repeat ourselves and inadvertently cause our conversation partner to become frustrated or impatient with us. It's best to allow one question at a time. Abandon is a strong word, but I'm just going to put that. Kelly is nearly done filling out the survey. There are a few statements still left blank, so we'll begin with those right after we reflect on number 24. It is possible that some of my beliefs are not true. 
<laughs> All right. That'd be awesome if somebody put no. I've seen a no on that one before. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's tongue in cheek, and sometimes people really mean oh, it. Oh, like they're just playing. Yeah. I'm sometimes, so serious right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just came out from the temple, and it's literally like dropped me into my heart. Into like, your serious spot. Well, that's good. Like just a very emotional. For what I'm doing. How are you feeling right now? Oh. Are you okay to talk about this a little bit more? Sure. I mean, I might be like emotional. I'm just like in my heart space right now. Yeah, but right. After just coming back from the temple, that's yeah. going to happen. Um, writing letters to everybody. Let's talk about the ones that we didn't fill out. Um, <laughs> nice. Th that's, a good, that's a good way to start. <laughs> okay. This is one of my favorites in the survey. That I didn't fill out? Mm -hmm. oh. Actually... The three that you didn't fill out are the ones that I uh, tend to ask questions about probably the most. Um, well, maybe not so much 11, but 17 and 18 for sure. That's interesting. Hit me. Let, let's start with 18. The most important criteria yes. for my beliefs is they match reality. And if I were to rephrase that, could I write the most important criteria for my beliefs is that they are true? How would you But respond? like I I'm okay to be proven wrong though. I'm okay if something changes. Right. You're okay you're okay with discovering that you were once mistaken about something and changing your mind. Is that yeah. what you're hearing you say? Yeah. I mean I just think totally. that everything's so ever changing. Yeah. It's beneficial to find out when you're wrong about something. Yeah. Like I'm changing on a daily basis. It's hard to say. I don't know how to answer. Like it's it's not like black and white. Let's make it not black and white then. On a scale between zero and a hundred, where zero is not at all important, and a hundred is it's the most important criteria by which I arrive at beliefs. How important is it for the for these beliefs to be true and corresponding to what's real? Hundred. Hundred. Okay. Yeah. I mean, me too. Is the most is it is the truth the most important thing for your beliefs? I mean, yes. But I'm also open to like being shown something different that And that would be something new that's true, right? Yeah. Okay. If it's not true, do you want to believe it? No. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think we're on the same page. Are we on the same page? Yeah. I think we are. I'm always open. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're open. Like this whole bottom section, you checked strongly agree to everything about when we should change our minds, except for 23. And that's like kind of a different one to stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So do you, should I mark you down as agree then for number 18? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's go to number 11. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to time myself because okay. I don't want to over over extend my time. Okay. Uh, this is like seven minutes. Okay. So I'll try to go too much further than that. Um, I like it. Yeah, good. A little upside down hourglass. Yeah, it's kind of neat, right? It's very cool. Eleven. Believing something that is false feels just like believing something that is true. What do you think? Like it's all about the mindset. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so true. Gosh, these are such interesting words. Believing in something false feels just like believing in something that is true. No. No. I don't really take time to, I guess, believe in something false. Have you ever believed in something false before? I'm sure. And can you imagine a time that you believed in something and then you changed your mind? Yeah, so I guess it was the same. Because I didn't know what I didn't know. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm struggling with no, this. No, no, it's, it's good. Like... I just got chills hearing you say that. <laughs> How do you want to mark it? <sighs> <laughs> I'll let you do the mark. Why are we do... Wait, what number 11? 11, yeah. I'm going to put agree. Okay. 
Yeah. Because if I don't know what I don't know, it's going to feel the same. It's going to feel true if you're convinced. Yeah. And being convinced is different than actually possessing knowledge, it sounds like, from your perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is the last one we didn't fill out. Okay. And this is probably the hardest one on the survey. Okay. For, for some people. I'm, it also, I don't know, maybe I'm I'm still trying to figure out life also, so I'm not like a guru really, or anything, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just a dude. Uh, someone is justified in their beliefs until they are proven wrong. I mean, it's a personal experience. So I don't really have spaciousness to judge someone's beliefs. Mm. Because, like, the question we had before... Like, I feel like it's a service for us to have, like, these conversations so that we can all come into, like, discovery, self-discovery and self and knowledge, you know, like, that person might know what they don't know or don't know what they don't know. Also. So I'm actually hearing number 16 in your answer to my question. I'm hearing... I give all claims the benefit of the doubt when I first encounter them. So I'm hearing you say like sometimes you will hear somebody who has an experience and you give them the benefit of the doubt yeah. and you don't need them to to show how they could be proven wrong first to believe them. Oh, I think it's good if I can just slow down with people and like allow everybody to be feel heard. Mm. Uh, let's talk about this word justified really quick. Sure. Um, what do you think justified means? Justified? Yeah. When is someone justified to believe something? I mean, this is really hard because, again, I don't... I have my own systems and I'm open. Yeah. To shifting. How about for just you? Let's talk about just you for a minute. When do you consider yourself justified to believe in something? I mean, oh, this is really hard for some reason. It's because it's epistemology. It's hard. Yeah, it's how we come to to our beliefs that it's going to be. Justified. I mean, I feel like we're all justified in how we move in the world. And we're all evolving and learning and bettering ourselves and becoming more potent in our personal dharmic path. So we're justified every step of the way. Like we have, we have, to, like I feel like I have to embrace all of the pieces of the growth process in the most loving way that I can and compassionate. So, I think every step is justified, however it looks. And I think it will, I think it just evolves. People will naturally evolve, I hope. Can you think of anybody that you've ever met in your life? And my timer is nearly up. But, and we can flip this as many times as you want. <laughs> but I think dinner calls probably for you at some point. But can you think of a time where someone you knew I, I'm just looking at the sunset. The sunset's great out here. It's I'm always gonna, just ridiculous. Go ahead. Finish the um, can you think of any person that you've ever met who was not justified to believe what they were believing? No. I, I'm not that person. I'm not the person. It's important for you to believe in things that are true. I think... Yeah. It's not justifiable to like physically or damage people or right. expire I, people. Right, for sure. Transition. So yeah, no, so I'm that's interesting. Are you associating is this like a way of avoiding conflict? <laughs> that you're talking about? Like are some people mistaken? And this isn't even, this is just, 
not even trying to change anybody yet. Just like, yeah. are there some people who are wrong? Who are wrong? Yeah. These words are really hard. I know. Like, wrong, right? I generally mistaken. Don't mistaken is the word. Playing that. I think everybody. It seems to be that I'm surrounding myself with people who are on a path of like purpose. Some sort of. That's what it looks like in my life. Who I'm surrounded with, and I'm open to witnessing community in every place that they are along their path. So it might not ever look beautiful. It might not always look beautiful. It might, you know, our life is like that. So, right on. I can't, I really can't answer that. I've, because I've had so many deep experiences in my own personal life that I could have said that was and it might have an essence of wrong, but I don't feel like open to like pegging it as wrong because there's so many layers under everything. Like there's something deeper in every uh, occurrence. I could keep adding more layers of questions to this, though I do want to give you an opportunity to, to exit because uh, I don't want to like bogart all your time or whatever um, and my time runs up so I always ask for more time but I totally understand if, if we should end it here I would be open to having one more one more time. okay let's flip it again thank you appreciate that thank you makes me feel good I'm give that a little tap to get the water started in there sometimes it needs a little encouragement there's a little air bubble <laughs> also my camera overheated here yeah, but I have two more, so let me just make sure. That, which is important. Yeah, and that's more of like audio. That's good. Yeah, because like the audio here is kind of crazy. It's no longer overheating. That's great. Okay. Yeah, it's like hey, I can't turn on anymore. That's fine. The way, the direction I want to go now is um, justice and fairness. And I'm going to ask you about how you view justice and fairness and right and wrong in that way. Um, imagine you're on jury duty. Have you ever done jury duty? Yeah. Okay. So, this is interesting. Um, um, do you suppose some people have been wrongly committed for a crime? In the, just ever. Definitely. Totally. Would you say that the jury w in that scenario was mistaken? Yeah. Again, there's a lot of layers to that. Yeah. Yeah. Mis uh, misinformed, maybe manipulated, maybe mistaken, maybe rushed, maybe a lot of things maybe racist, maybe, sure. you know, a lot of things that could have happened. Yeah. So you can imagine a time in which like a jury duty or jur jurors had it in their heads that somebody did something that they didn't do Yeah. and wrongly committed a person. And that's like high stakes. That's deep. Right? Yeah. Um, in those instances, The truth would seem important for others as well as just for yourself. For sure. Okay. If you're talking about something like that solid, that grounded, that feels really, really important. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> And this, just to tack on to kind of what we were talking about, I heard a lot of like, you, you don't want to like harm anyone and, or judge people. It's, those were things I, thought, I, I think I was hearing. Am yeah. I wrong? Or, okay, yeah. And I guess I'm wondering, can we respectfully judge? Yeah. Yeah? 
I don't think it's like necessarily respectfully judged. I think what's happening is maybe we all speak our present moment truth. Like present moment truth. Is that the same thing as belief? No, that means like what's happening present for moment you belief. In present moment. Yeah. You need to leave like without me taking it personally. Let's like like if yeah, you can respectfully listen and disagree. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, I just think, yeah. You're doing a great job. You really are. You're, like, sticking with me. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I really believe that if we can be in present moment truth, like, for example, if people, a group of people mean? are out, let's say we're doing something really substantial, like even going to a funeral or something. And someone's present moment truth is that they don't want to be there. Oh, okay. That's more of a social level. For example. Right. If for the purposes of the survey, let's think about things that are not social. Okay. Just because it clears up kind of okay, categorical up. things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking of more like facts. Like Got the me. way that we think about facts or just beliefs in general. Irrespective of about people. Because people can change social yeah. creatures is super complicated so how about just like things like um you know whether or not the election was stolen or whether or not vaccines uh work or whether or not there's an even or an odd number of candies in this box okay ask the question again yeah um it was about judge the last question yeah, I think it was, I'm kind of losing myself also, because I'm like tracking what you're saying, but also like, yeah. I'm trying to remember why I brought up I think <laughs> some of this. You were trying to like wrap it into the last one. Yeah. I got, I got sidetracked a little off. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. I think it had something to do with, um, yeah, just what I remember hearing you say about um, not wanting to judge hurt other people. people or hurt other people. Yeah, right? I just want everybody to feel like heard, feel safe in who they right. are, yeah. and to be able to be in their own expression without having somebody react to them and like being their own trauma space. Like, just be cool and natural as much as possible, and I don't know. That's just my way of flowing, and it's not always great, but it works, I guess. <laughs> it works for me. Yeah, I feel like it's like a gentle space, and I like that. Yeah. Because I'm going to balance somebody else who's coming in through with a lot of fire and accents. You know, just, we're all needed here. We're all needed, I think. That's all. Definitely. It's good to have multiple perspectives to help us converge on what's going on yeah you know, like what's really real let me take a look at a totally different one um, sure. i want one of those tic tac yeah you can have one for sure i could make it like even you can make it even yeah. oh. oh i got it here now i gotta eat one <laughs> <laughs> thank you oh uh, yeah no problem um let's take a look here Why not? Let's talk about 23. This is totally unrelated to everything okay. else just about that we're talking We're about. Scared. This is more about like how we weigh or how we think about how we weigh our confidence mm -hmm. in something being true. Okay. The more unusual the statement, the stronger the evidence needs to be. My entire life is unusual. Yeah. It's like, what do I... It, okay. It feels unusual. It doesn't feel like in the line of norm. Hmm. Maybe before I do that one, I should talk about 13. Okay. Believing something without evidence is admirable. What do you think? <laughs> Let's talk about that one first. We'll That's probably kind of ridiculous. That one first. I don't know what to say. Like, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> it's admirable? Come on. I mean... Is it admirable to believe in something without evidence? Or that thing being true? No. Hmm. Okay. It's just what it means. Uh, how do you, do you want to, uh, 
Do you want to disagree then? Or how do you want to mark it? Do you want to change your answer? What did I put it in? It doesn't matter. You can just change it. <laughs> oh, I put neutral. Right. Yeah, because it, it's not either or. It's just like, okay, great. Let me ask this instead. Um, is it acceptable for you to believe in something without evidence? My belief system is based on experience, experientials. That leads me to number eight. Okay. Um, I guess I would agree because for me, it's like, I also base my belief system through, like, experience, like, prayerful experience. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm so I'm trying sorry. To try. No problem. It's it's hot and, like, dry. No, and... but that's my truth. Yeah? So I'm extra. So, like, do you believe something without evidence right now? Like, do you have a belief right now that has absolutely no evidence uh -uh. to back it up? Okay. Why not? Why not disagree to sure. 13? Sure. No. Yeah. Okay. Why do you say sure? You're not doing it just because I'm saying I'm no, asking, are you? Because I think what, how you rephrased it is good. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, now let's go to 23, and then we can close it out. Okay. The more unusual the statement, the stronger the evidence needs to be. And you disagreed because pretty much everything seems unusual. I mean, it's perspective. I mean, I'm just going with my flow and, like, community. Just learning. Okay, let's do a thought experiment. Sure. Um, imagine, I'm just checking to see if this will power on, no, the battery's still ahead, I'll charge it later. Imagine, uh, okay, here's, it's a thought experiment, but it's not, Yeah. it's actually not a thought experiment at all, this is, uh, real, I'm asking, I'm gonna make statements, they're not hypothetical. And I want you to tell me how confident you are that I'm telling you the truth on a scale between zero and a hundred. Zero is I have no confidence that this is true. It doesn't mean that you think it's false. It just means you don't know. Yeah. You have no confidence. Right. And a hundred is um, uh, all confidence, no answers. Okay. Yeah. Um, the claim is uh, that I drove to Burning Man. 100. Uh, I'm just going to believe in you. 100. 100, okay. The second one is um, I own a car that I drove to Burning Man. I'm going to believe in you, so 100. Okay. The second claim is uh, while I only drove to Burning Man in one car, I actually own three cars. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. How confident are you that I own three cars? Have you been to Playa Alchemy? <laughs> I mean... Any number that... I would not assume you're going to lie to me about something like that. So I would say a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one is, I came to Burning Man in a car, and I also own ten cars. Personally. I'd be like, that's pretty deep. Congratulations. Yeah. And what number do you suppose you would attribute to that that claim? I mean, it sounds like wild. Like I'd be like, "Whoa, you're like really leveling up, like Elon Musk or something." Yeah. I would ask you questions like, "What are you doing with ten cars? Like, are you working on cars? Are you doing right. art cars? Like, are you sponsor? Like, I would." It sounds be, like, like you would still money. give me some benefit of the doubt sure. that I own ten cars. Though, is your number anything other than a hundred? Or is it still a hundred, do you think? I don't know. It's alright, take your time. 
because I would ask you questions to make to be like, what's your what, what are you doing? Like, period, George. Yeah. Like, I would give you the benefit of the doubt and trust in you. Okay. The third claim. To be in trouble. The third claim is all the same things. Yeah. Except for, I own an invisible car. Then I'd be like, are you taking mushrooms or something? Or like, right. So I'd be like, okay, you're flowing. You're flowing. All right, right. <laughs> you're so what would your confidence be that I own an invisible car? And this I mean, is not hypothetical. This is like right now, here and real. I own an invisible car. Like, no. where's your confidence? On that? Zero. Okay, zero. But I would love you for, for sure. saying that. Yeah, and this like, is about the respectful I judgment play thing. I you in the whole vibe. Yeah. So if I hand you ordinary keys, ordinary keys that you can see and tell you that those belong to my invisible car, does that affect your zero? <laughs> okay. If they're ordinary. If they're ordinary. You know, if they were like a If plastic. I hand you invisible keys. I would like you a lot. Yeah, now you're holding invisible keys in your hand. What does your confidence level change to? One or does it change? I'd be like, yes, it's yeah, good play. Because you are held on, something un like unusual. Do you want to read 23 and tell me <laughs> where I, how that thought experiment resonated with you? <laughs> you probably. No, I love it. This is great. I live for this. Yeah, no, this is awesome. No, the only reason, the only way to hate you is if you like stormed off because you hated this or something. But even then, I'd be like, ah, I hope they're fine. Yeah. You're good. Exactly. You're good. The more unusual the statement, the stronger the evidence needs to be. Yeah. As long as you give me invisible yeah, keys, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Though it does seem like, what what do you think was the purpose of that kind of like thought experiment? Was there something that you took away from that? Like, what do you think? Yeah. Just leave it there. I mean, oh gosh. Or maybe, maybe the thought experiment was unfair or... Maybe, no. Yeah. I just think... I don't know. I... There's solid and like solid facts about this conversation. And then there's like the playful side of the conversation. Sure. So... I just want to know what you really believe about how your belief weighs confidence. Do you get more confident? when you have more evidence. Yes. And does your confidence tend to drop when you first hear something, if that thing is completely wildly outside of your normal? I would say, to be honest with you, a little bit, and I would follow it up with questions. For sure. Yeah, that's a that's an and, and yeah. that's an, the addition is... And I would play along, too. Okay, yeah, I mean... All of it. I would play along so, so long as there's sincerity exactly. with the other person. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It do, it would drop like a, it would definitely drop. And I'd also be like in the slow flow of like having a deeper understanding moment. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I loved this conversation. <laughs> I only did three today before the sunset, and this was my favorite one for sure. Really? Uh, this was good. Do you have any questions for me? And I'm a wide open book. How does your belief system measure to what I was speaking into? Like, how does it compare? Are yeah. you asking me to judge you? No. No. Just measure it. How does it measure? Yeah. Like, what do you think I don't of even my. Know. Like, how do you think of like, my wild. Well, if you want, I can mark the ones that I mark different. Okay. Yeah? Want me to do that? What are you going to do? Make a circle? I'll just, or make make a, a... I'll just make a little line next to it. Um, no, uh, I'm only one off on this. I'm only off by like one or two on this one, it just depends. Thanks, so. uh, I still. I didn't get it marked down for number 17. Oh. 
Um, I don't know if you want to do that one or not. What is the question again? Uh, someone is justified in their beliefs until they are proven wrong. It's probably one of the more difficult ones. On it's there. so difficult. Let me ask this, though. I'll, this, I'll just go straight into the thought experiment I, I tend to think about. All right. Can you think of something, Please. can you think of something, anything, that someone has believed some time ago um, that is both false and also something that you can't prove wrong? This is... Yeah. Think of anything at all that anyone could imagine that is both false and impossible to prove wrong. I mean, we're going into like... Yeah. Okay. Uh... I don't even, I can't even say it, but okay, I've got it. You've got it? Okay. Is that person believing in this thing, if they're using 17 to hold on to that belief, and they're saying, well, you can't show me that it's wrong, so I'm justified to say that it's true. Right. My question for you would be, okay. is this person, irrespective of how we feel about this person or judge them. Yeah. Is this person doomed forever? No. To, well, are they stuck in this belief forever if they're using 17? If they're saying, I'm justified because you can't show me I'm wrong, so I believe it. Is this person doomed forever to believe in a thing that's false? Because they're waiting for you to prove them wrong, but they can't be proved wrong. Um, they're, they're in a, a difficult situation. I think. These are twisty, turny questions for mm, me, for my personal mind. Right. How it works. No, for a lot of people too, yeah. Oh, okay. I would love to have this be something that's taught in schools because um, it's really simple. And you can even do this yourself. All you need to do is just ask uh, questions. Um, the op more open ended the question, the better. So, like, this starts with what or how. Um, you can figure out how someone determined what it is they determined about these things. We never really picked a claim that you personally hold, but we examined your entire epistemology here. At yeah. least what I am capable of doing. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. Any other questions for me? No, thank you. Thanks. I'm going to take a picture of this and then, and then you can go. I'll give you this. Thanks so much. That was wonderful. Thank that was a great you. talk. <laughs> Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So much effort goes into bringing you these talks. To hold this flat so it doesn't like flip around. And I'm so grateful for all of those who like and subscribe. So quiet. That's fine. So bad. I've got more interviews in the works as we speak, so please stay tuned for more. Okay. Sweet. Thanks. Thank you. That's for you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. What's your name? Uh, Nathan. And Kelly Love. Kelly Love. That was lovely. That was wonderful. Thank you. You were great. Yeah. A very attentive listener and, and brave. Thanks for all those things. Thank you. Have a great time. Oh, oh, last thing. If you could put your name here so I can send you the audio. And then um, I might ask you to post it on my YouTube channel. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, just like this. They're all very different, so please don't judge the whole channel because of one video. Some of them are really good. I know, I, I, I definitely know you wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't judge you. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, true. You Di right? Come on, didn't you? We went over this, Nathan. Come on. <laughs> And it's Kelly, right? Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too. Have a good one. See ya. Nice. <sighs>